Interested in using Fiddler to help troubleshoot Power BI issues? That's coming up. Hi, I'm Adam Saxon. Welcome to Guy in a Cube. Last week we took a look at how you could set up Fiddler and actually what it was and how you can use it to trace web information. This week we're going to take a look at how you can use Fiddler to really dive in to see what Power BI is doing and to help troubleshoot any issues you may be happening. It may give you some insights into what's going on. Let's go ahead and dive right in and see what we can find. All right, let's go and open up Fiddler and it'll start capturing once we open that up. Let's go log into Power BI. And sign in. All right, then let's go to Fiddler and see what it did. We'll go ahead and stop the capture. And let's take a look here. Okay, so the first thing that we see here is Power BI metadata app. We can go ahead and click on that. You'll also see that the host that we're going to, you can tell what data center that we're actually hitting. So in this case, it's West US. And the actual request itself, the URL, that's the API call that the client or the browser is actually making to the Power BI service. So it's making the metadata app call. Under the headers, we can see some information here, uh, most important of which is this request ID and activity ID. So activity ID, we can use that on the back end for tracing. So if you ever do have to call support, you can provide that activity ID, even if you don't get an error message, say if you have a slow running report of some kind and you want to get information out of that, that activity ID can allow us to go search the back end and hopefully get some more information about it. On the request side, we're actually going to want to focus on the JSON tab. So the actual, the JSON tab is what has the data that came back from that API call. And in here we can go dig into what's actually going on. So first off, we can see what the active dashboard ID is. We can see a list of the dashboards. So in this case, we can see that I've got a couple here. So I've got retail analysis sample. I've got human resources sample. Uh, we can scroll down and we can see other uh, dashboards that are in there. So let me go ahead and collapse that. And then we've actually got an item that's provided from a content pack. So this was an organizational content pack that I went and connected to. If we scroll down, then we can also see the models that are available for us. You can see the display names. You can see all the items here. We can see what refresh schedules are enabled for that. So just a lot of information here that describes all the data that you're going to see when you first go to powerbi.com. All right, so the next metadata item that we're going to see here is this refresh user metadata. And what this does is just refresh the data that's collected on the, on the client side. And so in here, you can see that I've got some group information uh, that we're seeing. So I've got a couple groups. And then you can also see some quota information. You can see the tenant metadata as well as if I'm a trial at all. You can also see if you are a pro you a pro user trial, you can also see when that ex expiration date is. The next item I want to take a look at is one of the APIs which is called explore slash conceptual schema. So this is actually the schema of a given model ID. If we don't know what this model ID is, we can go back to the metadata app and you can go and figure out what that model was and what the ID is. So, but this actually lists out the actual schema for that model. Um, we'll get the columns. So we can really just explore what that is, any hierarchies or whatever data is actually in there. Now, some of these will have IDs in them and you may not necessarily know what that ID represents, so that's gonna be one of the struggles there, but you can kind of get a gut idea for what the model schema actually is. And hopefully you'll know what the model is anyway so that you can kind of correlate it to that. All right, so let's go back and we'll start up the capture again. And let's actually go and go into a report. All right, and then we'll go back to Fiddler and stop that and take a look. Okay, so we can see here, we've got the conceptual schema that we were on last time. And then what I wanna draw your attention to is this explore slash query data call. So explore slash query data is gonna do actually that. So this is actually, we're gonna issue a query to the backend service and then we're gonna get a result back. So if we start up top on the request, if we go over to JSON, in here we can actually see what the query was. It's called a data shape query and we'll see what that query was that we sent to the backend service. So you can scroll down and you can see all of this information. And then for the request, 
here is going to be the actual result of the data that came back. This is going to show any of the expressions that are there. Uh, we're going to see any specific limits that are placed on the data. We can see the selects. And it's going to give us the information that we're going to use to actually create the visualizations that you see in the report. So where this can be really handy is that if we get some weird oddity in a visualization that's displayed in a report, we can come back to Fiddler and look at the query that came, the query that was issued and the results that came back and try and line that up to see, hey, where did the, where did something go wrong? So maybe if there's a data type mismatch or there's some formatting issue, we can actually come back here and take a look at what actually happened. And then we can also take this and go back to our conceptual schema and compare it with the schema to see what's actually being represented. So that's a really good way that you can possibly troubleshoot visualization issues that may happen in a report. Okay, that was a quick look at how to use Fiddler to capture trace information and look at Power BI. It may help you when troubleshooting issues, or it may just help you understand better how Power BI actually works. I'd love to hear your comments. Go ahead and leave that down below. Did this help you troubleshoot an issue you were having with Power BI, or did it help you kind of dig in and see how the service worked? If this is your first time here, go ahead and subscribe. Every Tuesday, I take a look at a technical item just like this, where I take a look at how something works, or take a look at a new feature, or how to troubleshoot something. And every Thursday, I do an information roundup where I look at the items from the last week and find items that I found interesting and share that out with you. And really, this is about you. I want to help you be more successful and effective in the work that you do. So go ahead and subscribe and be part of the conversation.